Alright, so I went a little over my allotted 10 minutes on the last video, so just make sure you caught this one. We got 6i and 12i made 18i, and then a negative 6 after the i squared became a negative 1, and 12 makes 6. Moving on to domain and range. This first one's a parabola, and so it's going to look like this because it opens up. But the domain has to do with what x values we're allowed to plug in. I can plug in any number here because it, I can square any number, positive, negative, zero, anything. So I'm going to say all real numbers. And the range has to do with what y values come out. And so the y values for this parabola are going to start at a point. And so because we went 4 to the right and up 8, the vertex is 4, 8. And so the lowest it's going to get, because it, this you could mark as 4, 8, lowest it's going to get is 8. And so our y values are greater than or equal to 8. With square roots, you have to worry about when you take the square root of a negative. Because although we can get imaginary numbers, we don't get real numbers. And so they don't show up on the graph. And so we want 4x minus 5, what's underneath the radical. All those numbers we want to be greater than or equal to 0, so that we can take the square root of it. Add the 5, you get 4x is greater than or equal to 5. x has to be greater than or equal to 5 fourths. That's what the domain is. x is greater than or equal to 5 fourths. And you're going to set what's underneath the radical equal or greater than or equal to 0 every single time because you want it to be non-negative. For the range, you have to sort of imagine the graph. The graph of all these square roots has been the basic square root is just the square root of x graph. And that was greater than or equal to 0 because when you plug in 0, you get 0. This one, because it only was affected by the x, shifted it to the right, and that's why our domain changed. But our range is still going to be just everything greater than or equal to 0. And you can, you can graph that on your calculator to do double check that that's what's going on. Um, this one is the rational function we just got done with, and the problem here is with the denominator. What happens with your denominator is you can't divide by 0. So we want 4x minus 20 not to equal 0. Add the 20, 4x cannot equal 20, so x cannot equal 5. That's your domain. x can't equal 5. That's where your vertical asymptote shows up. And your range has will have everything to do with your horizontal asymptote. So if you remember, p is equal to q, degree 1, Degree 1. When you plug in huge numbers in for x, they're going to get closer and closer um, to 3 fourths for your y. That's your horizontal asymptote. And so it's going to be all real numbers except for y will not equal 3 fourths. And you can double check that on your graph because you're going to have your y intercept 3x minus 4. Sorry, you're going to have your horizontal and your vertical asymptote 4x minus 20. And we've got a fun, funny window left over. So there's your 3 fourths, which the calculator can help out, but you have to know your horizontal asymptotes. You can use your table to sort of help you out if you plug in huge numbers. You're getting closer and closer to 0.75 or 3 fourths, and that can refresh your memory if you want. Really, really big numbers, 0.75 approximately like that. All right, 22. Easy enough. Simplifying the expression, just make sure you distribute that minus to all of the second one. Minus 5x squared minus a negative 2xy, so that's plus 2xy. So 3 minus 5 is a negative 2x squared. 2xy plus 2xy is a 4xy, which had you not distributed that negative, you might have canceled those out. And then minus 7y squared. 23, simple as distributing the 5x through. We're multiplying. So negative 15, and then x times x cubed is x to the fourth, 
plus negative 5 times negative 7 is a positive 35x squared minus 10x, negative 5x times 2. Factor completely. Anytime you have four terms, you want to look at factoring by grouping. I can take out an x squared out of the first group, leaving a 4x plus 3. And I can factor out a 10 out of the second group, leaving a 4x plus 3. They have the 4x plus 3 in common. And so 4x plus 3 comes out in front, leaving x squared plus 10. We can't factor this anymore. Had this turned up as a x squared minus 16, we could have factored that some more, but because it's just x squared plus 10, not possible. Describe the end behavior of the graph. You can type this into your calculator, and all we're talking about in behavior is what does it do to the left and what does it do to the right. This one is going to go up to the left and up to the right because it's a fourth degree polynomial and it's positive. Because of that, it's even, and so it's going to behave like a positive parabola. It's going to go up to both sides. And so we did that by saying, how we described in behavior was by saying f of x, your y value goes up to positive infinity as you go to the left. So as x goes to negative infinity. And f of x goes to positive infinity as x goes to positive infinity, as x goes to the right. So this is the left, this is the right, this will always be the same. And these are the only two values that are going to change in general. On a sheet of graph paper, create an accurate graph of this. Um, really for this one, you should know that it's going to go down to the left and down to the right, opposite of what the last one did negative x to the fourth plus 2x cubed minus x plus 2. And you can just graph it and adjust this window. If we're asking you to graph on a multiple choice test, you're going to have the answers in front of you and you need to choose the one that matches the best. And so if you need to adjust the window to match what's on the test, maybe you need to zoom in a little bit and you can change it from the tens to the fives, and you can see it a little bit better. You can see, oh, it goes through negative one, goes through two, um, and it's possible to factor this one, um, but just to save time, I did it this way. Um, but you can factor this one and find the zeros the other way. So 27, given this, find the rest of the factors of the polynomial. What we're doing, what we're talking about is our synthetic division that we did. Um, if x minus 2 was equal to 0, x equals 2 is what goes here. And we just take the coefficients, 1, 4, negative 39, positive 54. Remember that if you're missing any of those terms, if you're missing the x term, you'd have to include a 0 over here. So we drop down the 1. 1 times 2 is 2. We add, we get 6. 6 times 2 is 12. We add negative 27, negative 54, and 0. And so we're left with x squared plus 6x minus 27. And so that factors into x plus 9, x minus 3. So the remaining factors are plus 9, minus 3. If you wanted to, you could type this into your calculator. And see where it crosses the x-axis. Um, and so it's crossing at negative 9 crossing at positive 2, positive 3. And so negative 9 gives you x plus 9 as a factor, positive 3, x minus 3 as a factor, and then the other one is our original one.